It happened very, very suddenly, very suddenly, and they weren't ready, and so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And so uh, elections do matter and things, there's trends and things that are happening. And as a Christian, you can look at it and part of you say, I, I, I have that sense things are changing and they're never going to get back to the way they were for the nation that's the United States. There's just some fundamentals that are changing that can't be put back. It, it'll change. Uh, that happened at the Civil War. Doesn't mean that God can't redeem it and make it better and so forth, but it's definitely going to change. This is what the prophet felt like Habakkuk just a few years, maybe five, six, seven years before Nebuchadnezzar swept in to town. And uh, in Habakkuk 3.16, the prophet said, I heard and my inward parts trembled. At the sound, my lips quivered. Decay enters my bones. And in my place, I tremble because I must wait quietly for the day of distress for the people to arise who will invade us. He knew that was going to happen, and there was nothing he could do. He had to sit quietly and wait. But hear what he finishes his short book with. He says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, Yet I will exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hind's feet or deer's feet and makes me walk on my high places. Praise the Lord. And that's the attitude we have to have when situations are changing. The United States is not the first society for a society to change. This has happened all throughout history over and over and over and over again. But when it starts happening and you're living there, it, it can take you off guard. You can just see things changing, and they're never going to go back to the way they were. And the question is, what sort of Christians ought we to be? And what I would say to you is, we've got to be the kind of Christians who are prepared when the phone call comes that says, okay, now you need to drop everything you're doing and come over here and do this. And you need to be prepared for that. And the only way we can be prepared for that is to do what the Word of God says and to think correctly about what the Word of God says, what the Word says, what the law is, what our calling is in relation to Jesus Christ. We have to think clearly about that so we'll be prepared to move when he calls us to move. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 1. And I have a little outline that I uh, am already not following. And so, but what I will do is at the end of it, I'll pass it out because it just gives uh, verses and stuff. And, you know, you don't have to sit there and write down verses and it may or may not be helpful to you. But um, I'll pass that out at the end. But Romans 1.18 uh, is a very important passage. You know, we can sometimes in our devotional study be reading um, a few verses, maybe a chapter, and that's a good way to study the Bible. And uh, you can land on a verse, and it can do you great good. But, you know, Paul's letter, his letters were written to be read. And so people came to church and read the whole letter. Can you imagine the first time people sat down and they read Romans from 1 to chapter 16? And it's like, whoa, what was that? You know, can you reread that again? You know, and we study these letters all the time. It can be very useful for you to read the sweep of Scripture. It, it presents differently if you read kind of Romans 1 through 8 one morning instead of like Romans 1, 14. Uh, and just sort of stew in that. If you read quickly eight chapters, it, God will talk to you differently than when you just stay on one verse. And I think we should do both. But Romans beginning at one eighteen says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God 
for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire towards one another, men with men, committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do the things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and all they, although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Therefore, you have no excuse, every one of you who passes judgment, for in that which you judge another, you condemn yourself, for you who judge practice the same things. And we know that the judgment of God rightly falls upon those who practice such things. But do you suppose this, O man, when you pass judgment on those who practice such things and do the same yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and rev revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each person according to his deeds. One of the great problems um, with the world is the world today doesn't believe in the wrath of God. It doesn't believe in the judgment of God. It doesn't believe the earth is going to open up and swallow them up. It doesn't believe that the rain's coming. It doesn't believe that Jesus will return. It just doesn't believe that. It doesn't believe in the judgment of God. And God's view of sin is very clear. He says it right here. The wrath of God will come and will be revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. That is the truth of God. It doesn't matter what people think. The reality is God will judge the world. But God loves the world. Amen? Why will he judge the world? Well, because man, uh, the gospel is very simple. We're told in 2 Corinthians eleven three, 3, Paul said, I, I really, I fear that your minds will be led astray as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness from the simplicity and the purity of devotion to Christ. And he goes on to say, I fear that you'll believe in another Jesus and another gospel. The gospel is very clear. Man turned away from God and sin reigned and death through sin. And so all die. So all, man has turned away from God but God loves man, and his solution to that problem is that he sent his son, his only begotten son, so that whoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is as simple as can be. It's his solution. So Jesus came to the cross. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we would die to sin and live to righteousness, and by his wounds we were healed and made whole. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called children of God. Amen? You have to receive him. He's paid the price, and that's the solution. But if you don't receive Jesus, he makes very clear that the wrath of God will come. It is coming. The judgment will come, and we all need to have an appreciation of that, and you can't preach the gospel without this. Let me say that again. You cannot preach the gospel without this. You cannot preach the gospel without law. You must preach the law. Why? Because the law is our tutor to bring us to Christ. 
You need to preach the law or no one will know they need a savior. Everyone wants to feel good about themselves. That's the definition of this age. And you're not going to successfully preach the gospel unless someone comes to an awareness that they need a savior. And we are the, pre the preachers of God. You can't just depend on the preacher. You're the one that's having coffee with the person. And if you really love them, if you really love them and really believe what God says is coming, you will tell them the truth as he opens the door and gives you the unction to do that. Man, uh, unsaved man's condition is he suppresses the truth in unrighteousness. So you've noticed in the world there's always this desire to suppress the cross. I remember uh, once a lady telling me she didn't um, tell her kids, she professed to be a Christian, but didn't tell her kids at Easter time about Jesus' death on the cross because she didn't like violence. You know, so they got to hear about the Easter bunny. Easter bunny doesn't save, okay? It, it is laughable, but the Easter bunny doesn't save. Everyone goes to hell with the Easter bunny, okay? And if you really love people, you need to tell them the reality of what's happening. What's happening is without the blood of Jesus Christ, the earth is going to open up and you're going to be carried into hell. That's the deal. That really happened back in Numbers 16. And people need to know that. And uh, it says in uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 25, man exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. We see evidence of that all over the place as we glorify men. And it says in Romans 2, 2, and we